So I remember from the beginning, even when we were planning it in another church, that it seemed to follow along this certain line of occupation in a, in a yeah. plane and a field of even distribution. And it, that even came into San Fantin when we brought the idea to San Fantin. And then yesterday that completely changed. Yeah. The, um, somehow the original plan was very much related uh, with former other works I have done in the past. Like you should not walk o over plowed fields, mm -hmm. which is part of the collection of the gum in Torino. Or like uh, one I have done in Regent's Park uh, some years ago. Mm -hmm. I have done <coughs> a few works which imply this, uh, this visual approach of a field that disappears in the horizon. So it's, uh, a, a, in a way, it's a form of measuring the distance till the end, mm -hmm. till the horizon. And there was no interruption. There were no, um, no, it was just the uh, assumption of a serene field that in a very silent way tempts and drives the, the way how we see it to a very, very far away end. Mm. This started as one of those. Correct, yeah. Absolutely. We, I've done so many sketches, drawings, watercolors, but I never anticipated this in those uh, um, drawings, preparatory drawings. And so Pedro, with the original plan with the work having to be a, a plane of light and darkness within the church, and that's what was originally installed, the original sketches, the original idea, the original plan, <laughs> and it was installed this way, and then at a certain point, there was a convulsion or a disruption, as you were calling it yesterday. And I was curious if maybe the church environment or symbolically or the spatially something... If the church interferes no, not somehow in, in the way how the work has been transformed? Not interferes, but contributes, influences contributes. or associates um, with that. I have to say change. no, no, indeed. This was something which was specifically uh, um, between me and Dorek. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, I have watched patiently, in, uh, intense, uh, in an intense way, seen all the parts of the, uh, the, the, um, the work being installed, all the electrical connections, then everything was connected to power, then light started to come up. We started the, 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 the moment of um, dropping the, uh, the rubble, the debris on the glasses. So I have seen all this being done accordingly, according to my original drawings. So I witnessed the birth of the, the actual birth of the, of the work as a, a physical entity. So this was an activity. It, it came through yeah. a process, came through an activity, and the activity just continued it, or it, developed. It is, it is, a, um, it is a consequence mm -hmm. of, the very, of the very act of installing the drawing, you, the, the work. You installed the work uh, f more or less following original ideas and plans you had previously in your head and then in your notebook mm -hmm. and then here in the church. And then the moment yesterday when there was a moment yesterday when suddenly it, cha it needed, in your mind there was a necessity for a change, a necessity for a... It's in the moment when I realized that the work had itself an inherent uh, uh, power and vibration mm. that was not uh, still 
seen. I mean, so it, it wasn't it, manifested yet. It was. Yeah, split. it was. I mean, it has the potential. Everything was in there, mm -hmm. but it was invisible. So I had to uh, to make it visible. I had to uh, somehow to um, interfere with the work as it was planned in order to let free, let go free the the power that the work had in itself, but it was not revealed until the moment I decided mm. to start uh, destroying tables, uh, putting them on top of each other, throwing pieces of garment and clothes all over it. Uh, I had to shake it, like right. when you shake someone to wake <laughs> him up. Right. I understand. Because this person, for some reason, was, uh, was disappearing into its himself or herself. And then you were afraid that this person will fall into a profound and deep sleep. And they wouldn't and then, then realize their, this they wouldn't realize their potential if they continued Ab to absolutely. be. Absolutely. So this is of, of, obviously a metaphor that we are using here, but it was, I knew the work has a different power. It was, he could uh, propose himself, itself in a more um, dramatic, tormented, powerful uh, uh, way, mm -hmm. which was not the case if I would just keep it as I've designed it before. But the artwork is never finished mm -hmm. till, uh, till you decide. But there was a phrase you used the other night talking about, and it was as if you were seeing into the future in a way with the work, with the idea of its potential becoming, and you said this is the moment when the cat jumps. Wow. That's, uh, that's an, an image or a metaphor, or it's a little story that I, that I do appreciate a lot, and it's quite a good example how uh, an artist relates to its own work. Uh, one, if you look at a cat mm -hmm. getting ready to jump, either to catch a fly that passes by or to catch a bird that passes by, you see this cat and you see that the cat is preparing himself to jump, but apparently nothing is visible. Mm -hmm. But you can realize, you can understand that every single muscle of that uh, animal is being prepared to a, a moment, mm -hmm. a particular moment, a moment of beauty. And that which is this moment when apparently is still and he doesn't move, he stares at something like he is hypnotized, hypnotized. And suddenly, without noticing it, the, you don't notice, and the cat suddenly whew, jumps. He was still frozen, but he was not at all. Mm -hmm. He was getting ready for this moment. So he was there, he was watching, he was getting ready, nothing apparently was going on, and from one microsecond to the next microsecond, this magnificent creature mm -hmm. jumps in the air and grabs what he was looking at. And did you have that same feeling? This is how an artist prepares himself. Mm -hmm. He has his work with him. He's looking at him. He's working on him. He's just getting his body ready to jump. And there is a moment, there is a particular moment, a moment with no return, a moment, a, a, a zero moment when the whole new thing is about to come up. And then that's the moment when the artist catches and gets what he is looking after in his own work and he suddenly realizes where he has to go, which is the direction and how far he has to jump, how far he has to go to grab what you want. And it's a decisive moment. It's not, uh, it's not thinking. It's that, not... No, it's, it doesn't have to do, uh, it's not an intellectual process. It's not, uh, it's not a critical process. It's something which is 
definitely from the emotional mm. and from the, uh, the in, um, unconscious side of your um, mind. It's not, you don't decide, you don't plan, you, you do not positively uh, know about it. You just know that it will come to you. It will be revealed to you. You just have to be attentive and ready and prepared. And you will know it before, before your intelligent side knows it. Some part, other parts of your mind will know it and then you will do the right paint stroke that was missing in the painting, right. or you do the right change in the, in, the, in the work. And do you see it as an intuitive? It is. In an imaginative leap? And it, like you say, it's not something that you plan. It, you, you... It's not something you plan, but it comes to you. Uh, this comes with training. It's a hunting thing. Mm -hmm. You go out in the field, you go hunting, you go through the forest, you listen to all the noises, and, do you think and in you a have way... all the smells, and it's something that you practice along your lifetime. Yeah. I would not know to do this 20 or 30 years ago. But this ago. is not something that falls in the realm of art making, if you say it's you, you go out in nature. It, learning to pay attention is very important in making art. and. That's the aspect that is, I think, very important. What to do, which decision to take, which action to do, which not to do. And that will determine the success of if the work has the right intuitive force to it. I would, I would give myself the privilege of calling to this conversation another uh, metaphor, this time from cinema. Mm -hmm. There is this magnificent film called Dune. Yeah, Dune. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Dune is uh, a science fi a sci fi thing that happens in another plan planet mm -hmm. in Arrakis, which is th the planet where all this happens. Okay. And um, the star, I mean, the, the act, the most important character on this film, um, is from a royal family. And he has a lot of mentors okay, that his father put around him who trained him, not only intellectually, but also to know how to uh, deal with politics and people, and most of all, to deal with uh, as, a, um, as a soldier. I mean, he has to mm -hmm. uh, learn how to fight. He has to learn how, how far can his body go, that's it. So in, uh, when he's being trained from the military point of view, He's blindfolded. He's blindfolded and he has a, a kind of a sword okay. like this. And there is a robot, which is a robot that uh, circulates around him in the air. And this robot is composed of two or three spheres. They all can project either uh, arrows or spares. Okay. And so this young man, as to Im Im imply all his body, all his senses, and all his intuition, because he cannot see. So he has to imagine okay. how it will have to respond to an attack from the robot, which might be in front of him or silently circulating to the back. So what is required from this young man is a predisposition to be attentive, and to be seriously mm. involved in whatever is around him. Well, metaphor apart, mm. this is a little bit how I see the, the activity, uh, my activity as an artist. I have to see with my, eye from my eyes from within. Mm -hmm. I have, it's looking within myself that I, I will learn to deal with the outside of myself. So I have to know without looking, I have to know what is given to me, what is the, uh, the amount of um, propositions, things which apparently look absolutely relevant, things which I will not pay attention uh, unless I look again. And uh, this is exactly how I see myself as an artist 
going around in the world is pay attention, curiosity. Curiosity mm -hmm. is the most important tool of an artist mm -hmm. because it's this curiosity who will give this artist everything he needs to, through his artwork, transform his perception of the world and give it away to people so that people can, through this artwork, change themselves and their relation with So the do you think with the viewers of the work can actually have a, a relationship similar to have the heightened consciousness that you have in your intuition and your curiosity, do you think that can be part of the experience, the phenomenon of the artwork for the viewer? Well, that should be, that should be the re reality. I mean, we know that it, this is literally uh, not possible at all because each individual has his own condition, his own uh, perception of the world and his own awareness of himself. But an artwork should be able, by its own intensity mm -hmm. and ability to generate um, attention, an artwork should be able to create a possibility of sharing mm -hmm. this. So, despite of all the differences, an artwork should be somewhere in a place where all these differences can momentaneously uh, bring people together in obviously different manners and ways, but still there is a potential possibility which has to do with a desire or a hope mm -hmm. that an artwork can at a certain time be able to call people so that people would be together and they would transform the way how they see the world through the perception and the experience of this artwork. This is what? Well, this is utopia. We know mm -hmm. that. But if it would not be utopia, humankind would not be where we are today, despite of all the tragedies and the horrors. Mm -hmm. We are still uh, a great uh, invention from nature, and we are improving in our uh, great, worst, and terrible qualities. That's true. And this will not end. That's what this work is about is a never-ending story of uh, uh, a fight between light and darkness. Symbolically, this fight between light and darkness could be considered as the eternal opposition and contradiction and war between good and evil. You had mentioned that field was this element of containing the dialectic of good and evil and dark and light. And that's when the light went out. <laughs> yeah, and in fact, this field, this work of art, is nothing else but the mirroring of a person. That's a good end. That's a good end right there. <laughs>